Hi, my precious beloved friends. Um, wow. So much going on, huh? And I feel personally that God is coming closer, people. I believe that this is a transition time. Is a transition, is a shift in the spirit realm where heaven will come closer to the earth. Jesus pray, let thy will be done as it is in heaven. Let it be done here on earth. Let thy kingdom come. And I believe that the kingdom of, of God is going to come in a much bigger way than we ever have experienced on this life. And I believe that we are in the last times where the revival, the worldwide revival is going to hit very, very soon. And it starts with people hungering and thirsting for God. It start with, starts with repentance of sin. And, and, and to, to want to live a holy life. To holify and sanctify ourselves and to seek God. I don't think there's been so much prayer on the, this planet as it is right now. Much because of the COVID-19. But that is good. So out of pressure and despair, people are seeking God. And when we seek God, the glory will start to manifest in our lives and over our cities, our nations, our churches. It will create a shift, a change. I remember when I used to have long prayer sessions by myself in my apartment. Many times the Holy Spirit arrested me. Back in the days, he said to me, this Saturday or this weekend or this week, you're just going to be inside and you're going to be on your knees, Elena, in front of my face because I want to speak to you. And I want you to tap into more of me. You see, if you want the glory, you need to seek his face. Like Moses, who was up on the Mount Carmel. And he was there for 40 days. And God spoke to him. And it says in the Bible that when he, he came down from that mountain, his, sh his face was, was radiant. It was shiny. And it was so shiny that uh, he had to put a veil over his face because people couldn't look at him. I'm not saying I've been experienced exactly that, but I've been in long prayer uh, seasons of my life, uh, 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 as I said, arrested by the Holy Spirit, where I'd just been laying flat on the floor for days, seeking God. And it's been, so, it's been such an anointing in my apartment that one time I felt I saw it was like blurry in my apartment. And first I thought it was something wrong with my lenses, that they were dry. So I went into the bathroom and, and, and cleaned them. And I came back and the, the same like cloud or some blurry... Yeah, like a cloud was actually in my living room. And the only thing I could do was lay on my face. And say, you're so holy. God, you're so holy. You are holy, God. That was the only thing I could say. And those weeks or those days, God started to tell me about to clean up stuff in my life that was blind spots to me earlier. Stuff that I didn't see. We all have blind spots. Even if we feel we're right with God and, you know, we do our best and where we are right now. When we seek into the presence of God in a deeper level, it's like a big lamp from heaven, shiny light. 
Bible says that the, the city, the eternal Jerusalem city, will not need a lamp, a light, a sun. It will be the glory of God who's going to shine so bright in the eternity. And uh, I just have felt, uh, I, I remember one time I was praying a lot and I came to the church service after maybe three days laying on the floor here. And, and, and I came to the, the cafeteria in the church and, and some women were like, whoa, your face is all shiny. I couldn't see it because I've been on, I was under it. And that happened to me several times, that something changed with my eyes, my physical appearance were, um, it, it was, it was seen that I was, has been with God through my, my face, my skin, my, my, my eyes. Um, so I remember one time I met a really uh, famous man. I can't tell you his name. He's not uh, alive anymore. Very famous singer. And I was in this club and suddenly my eyes started to burn like fire. And God spoke to me and said, just look at him. And he was way over there across the room. So I was just obedient, you know, I looked at him, but I could feel the fire over my eyes. And actually, to be honest with you, I felt that I was ruling that area with God. I didn't understand so much back then what, what I was carrying, but after I could see that I owned the whole room in the spirit. So God was very strong over my eyes. And I looked at that man and suddenly the crowd was opening up and that man came towards me. And uh, I just said something to him about Jesus that just came out of my mouth. I actually had, I, I was thinking about saying something else to him. But what was out, coming out of my mouth was something else. And that man got so scared that he jumped back for real. He jumped back. He got scared of me. He got scared of my eyes. And, and, and uh, he left after a while. And uh, two, three days later, he was in a concert. He's a musician, this one here, in Norway. And his opening line in the concert was the exact, exact same sentence as I said to him. So people start writing about him in the newspaper and the fans were so shocked because they wonder if he got saved. What has happened to him? He was completely changed. And he only talked about Jesus from stage. Worldwide famous, super famous uh, musician. And the only thing I did was to look at him with, with eyes of fire that came over me. And that was just a little example of how God can use us if we tap into his glory. And I believe that the glory is going to come closer to the earth now. Uh, and it's going to be many extraordinary miracle signs and wonders taking place because his people is standing up and praying because we are tapping into the heavens, people then the glory of God will start manifesting in our lives, on our faces, on our bodies. You remember the other video I had in here where I told you that God showed me that there are going to be biological wars and how God will protect his people with a supernatural immune system. And the next day I found this, uh, this page on internet from science that they had did research on people who been under the power of God or the presence of God strong that the cell system were changing. The cells in their, their brains were also changing. So what am I saying here? You see, in Ezekiel, it would, we hear about the, the Lucifer when he was in 
in the heavens as an ark. He was a cherub. Cherub was, it was the highest rank of angels. And there was no other an angelic being who was so beautiful as Lucifer in the heavens. You can read it in Ezekiel. Um, I don't have exactly the chapter right now in front of me. Uh, I'll write it under the video for you. Uh, and how beautiful he was. He was perfect. He was so beautiful. I don't think he's that beautiful now. He did rebellion against God and was kicked out. You know the story. But what I feel when I look out into this world is that what do they lift up in this world? Money and uh, power. Uh, money is power and beauty is power. Outward beauty to always stay young. They deny the aging process and, and, and that's considered be, being ugly. And, and you have to look perfect now. That's why all these women all over the world are doing all these Botox treatments and they doing these operations to look like a doll, to look perfect. I think it comes from the enemy, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm not saying that we shouldn't take care of us, ourselves as women. We should, absolutely, and men too. We should take care of our bodies, exercise, and do our best. But that extreme focus on looking so beautiful that everyone look want to look like somebody in a magazine. And they put filters and then you have all this stuff in your face. You're a slave under it. You're a slave under it. Can you imagine? I know some of these women, for example, who have done all these treatments. And many of those women are very broken. They have hurts in their soul. They have issues. They have traumas. They have anxiety. And... If they would use the same amount of time and money on uh, healing their soul, they would they they would they will be totally restored. But you see, it doesn't matter if you have a beautiful face and a beautiful body. If you don't feel beautiful, or you're not beautiful on the inside, you may be bitter. Living in unforgiveness, you're full of wounds, you, you're full of fear. You can't have a great life, even with all that stuff in your face and have a perfect body. It doesn't matter. But I believe that God will raise up his people to look so beautiful. Not only are we going to get the, the diseases that the enemy is going to shoot out if we live close to him. But we're also going to look radiant. We're going to look a little bit like Moses when he came down from that mountain. If we live close to the presence of God. It's going to shine. Our faces are going to shine. We don't need that stuff. We are a different kind of people. We come from another kingdom. The kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is coming to earth. Is here. But it's going to expand and it's going to be more power manifested, more glory. And I believe, I mean, I read some um, psychology and, you know, when you are traumatized, you can, it can change your DNA. Yeah, a trauma can change your DNA. Can you imagine when God's glory is coming over people in the last days, it can change our DNA. It can give us a new youth. It can make our skin look heavenly. In the Bible, it says that we're going to have another body, a glory body. But I believe that we're going to have a little bit of that glory body here. Because God wants to show the world. He wants to show the difference between them and us. He wants to show them that we have a light over our faces. That our skin doesn't need Botox 
and all these injections because we have the injection of heaven. We have the glory injection from God. And I believe that that glory is going to be so strong that maybe some of the people we are meeting, they can look at us. Like that time for 20 years ago when I met this famous man and my eyes were start burning. And, and he couldn't look at me. He couldn't look at my eyes because God took my eyes. It was God looking at him that moment. That's why it was so strong. So Moses said in Exodus, he says, 33, please show me your glory. And that is my prayer. Show me your glory, God. Let your glory come down over us, over me, over our churches, our cities, our neighborhood, our nations, the coffee place. The, the workplaces, the universities, let your glory come down. I remember these old generals when I studied them, especially two of them, uh, Smith Wigglewood and Catherine Coleman. Um, she had so much glory over her life that uh, when she was uh, taking into a hotel, the whole hotel was wrapped in glory. Because one woman totally devoted to Christ. Can you imagine? One person, the whole building wrapped in glory. When she walked through the kitchen area in the hotel, everybody fell to the floor. Everybody fell to the floor. You remember when Jesus said, who do, who do you think I am? He said to the disciples. Who do they say that I am? And he they said, you are Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And when, and when they said that, or he said that, they fell. They fell to the ground, the Bible says. All the power, the glory that was over Jesus was enormous. And God gave Jesus glory. Um, but to glorify God on, on, on this earth. God gave Jesus that glory to glorify God. And Jesus gave us, he has given us that glory now to glorify him on this planet. In Revelation, it says, having the glory of God in 21, 11, it's radiance like most a most rare jewel, like jasper, clear and crystal. I'm telling you people, we are moving into a supernatural time and it's going to be so many amazing miracles and the presence of God is going to do so many miracles in our lives and through our lives, it's going to be supernatural. The supernatural is going to be our new natural if we live in prayer, if we live in prayer. We need to seek his face more than ever and heaven will come down. In Psalm 1, it says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight, but his, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree, firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its seasons, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he shall prosper. So, all of this is available to us. That tree to prosper, to always have fruit, to always have glory, favor, blessings over our lives, to shine like stars. Uh, like in Daniel, it says, um, Daniel 12, it says, Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heaven. 
There's a brightness up there. The glory of God is the light in heaven. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Isn't that beautiful? So people tap into God. Don't try to copy this world with your looks, with beauty. Don't come under that system. You see the enemy, he uses that beauty again to get power. He uses it, it as a powerful thing. But it's a lie. We have the power and we're going to show the original beauty on this planet the original brightness the original glory and light that comes from our father in heaven where there are always light there's always glory up there there's no shadows up there there's no darkness up there there's only light and when we live close to god when we seek to the third dimension when we seek up to heavens to, to reach into the third dimension, the frequency in the spirit will change over our lives. We will radiant like angelic. We will have something heavenly over our looks. And people doesn't know what, what it is when we enter in some places that you see it. They see it in our eyes. They're going to see it in our faces, in our smiles and our atmosphere that we carry. We are carrying heaven, people. Wherever we go, we're carrying heaven. We're shifting atmospheres. That's the people are raising up. Transformation people who are shifting atmospheres. Who are coming into cities. And shifting atmospheres in cities. You're coming into a, 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 a lukewarm church. And they all want to repent. You put a t-shirt t -shirt on. And you pray for it. And you go and give it to some prison. And a revival is going to start out there. That's the level we are going to reach people. Higher and higher with him. Heaven come down. Heaven come down and touch our lives. So my precious sisters and brothers, don't be scared of what's going on out there. Don't look at all that bad stuff that is so wicked and it's like the enemy tries to copy and do counterfeits of everything that God has done original and beautiful. We are going to be the light in this world. People are going to be drawn to us. Just wait and see. They will be drawn to us because they see that we have peace. We have joy in the midst of tribulation and we shine like stars. And we have something special over our lives because we are under the glory. And it's going to be stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And I believe that he can change our DNA. He can stop the aging process for a while. He can, he can stop it so we look, we look younger than we are and people doesn't know, understand why, how is that possible that you are so and so many years. I also believe this, yeah, I believe this one, Abraham and Sarah, Sarah was over 90 years old when she was pregnant. It says in the Bible that her, the, the, the fruit of her womb was dead it was dead but god waked it up he made something happen in her womb he created something supernatural so she probably got her period and she got pregnant he restored everything like she was 25 on the inside and god is going to do it again he's going to make very old people be pregnant He's going to make you shine like you are 20 years old. Yeah. The glory of God. You see in heaven, there's no old people. There's no old bodies there. There is only freshness and youth. And some of that, a piece of that is going to come over us in the last days. I believe it. So that's my little word today. 
God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. I have to run out now to see my friend. Amen.